Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a soap using this fragrance and it is out of this world from Nature's Garden. It's called Loving Spell and I think it's a dupe of Love Spell. Oh my word, it is so like fruity and vibrant. It says, I've not used this fragrance before, but it's got great reviews. It says it doesn't cause discoloration or acceleration. It's got good scent retention. This is what the reviews say. So you're coming along with me. Um, it makes me think of mimosas. So that's what I'm thinking about when I'm making this. It's so fruity, I'm like, ooh. And it's got a little, it's more than just fruit. And so I don't know, I'm thinking of mimosas making this. So for the color swirl that I'm gonna use, I have this Tangerine Wow from Brambleberry. And every time I, every time I use this, I go, it's a wow. Cause oh my word, it's like day glow, but it's so pretty, a little goes a long way. And so I really want just an orange to represent just a fruitiness and the vibrance of this in there. I'm not sure. Well, we'll see when we get there, but I just want this to be bright and let the fragrance sort of speak for itself because man, this kind of knock your socks off. It's good. Uh, this is going to be a goat milk soap today and I will do the milk and oil method. So I'm gonna get everything pulled together and uh, let's make some really juicy, <laughs> let's make some juicy soap today. That sounded weird, didn't it? Oh well, let's make soap. All right, it's additive time. So all the oils and butters are in here, ready to go. And I am going to add a couple extra, well, not a couple, just one extra thing here. I have got my coconut milk powder because of the mimosas and just the fruity scent of this. I just thought coconut milk sounded great. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons of kale and clay, two tablespoons of colloidal oats, and whoops two tablespoons of coconut milk powder just for fun why not right so there's the dry additives now i'm also going to add my farm fresh goat milk that i have water discounted in the lye solution to make room for that so good all right so that is it for the additives i'm going to get these blended in let them absorb and uh, we'll get to making soap after this All right, ready to move forward with the lye solution, which has cane sugar, tussa silk fibers, and sodium lactate. It's kind of my normal routine, <laughs> but that's what's in here. And I'm going to stick blend and stir up to emulsion and get the color split off. Let me show you this color. It is just such a crazy bright color. I love it. I mean, it's like happy all over the place. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? So this is about a teaspoon of color in here with a little bit of water just to make it blend easy. So that's ready to go. I've got my fragrance off to the side here. It says it doesn't cause discoloration, which surprises me. Look how yellow that fragrance is. But um, oh man, it smells good. <laughs> so let's go for emulsion here. And again, I just pulse a little and stir until I get this all up to emulsion, which you'll see it caramelize. When it turns that sort of beigey color, that's just the lye reacting with the milk sugars and stuff. It'll bounce back. All right. Oh my word, this color just delights me. Every time I use it, I'm like, wow. I'm just gonna use my spatula and make sure I get it all up off the bottom and then I will run the stick blender through both of these a little bit more and add the fragrance in there. Actually, I'll go ahead and add the fragrance first. Then we'll blend, why not? Oh, that is just so pretty. Can't say it enough. All right, here we go. Wish y'all could be here and smell this with me. <laughs> Someday they're gonna come up with smell-o-vision, right? Technology is so crazy. Why can't they come up with smell-o-vision? Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, that would make uh, shopping for fragrances so much easier. If you're an inventor out there, get on that, will ya? <laughs> All right, just gonna get up to a nice trace and then we'll get to pouring this and we're gonna do a hanger swirl today.
All right, it's the next day. It's been about 24 hours and I cannot wait to get in here. I wish I had smell -a vision This smells so juicy and bright. I love it and that color, come on now. Isn't that awesome? So I did come in early this morning and steam the top uh, with my clothes steamer. It's dry to the touch now. So let's get it out of here and see how that hanger swirl came out on the inside. You know I love me some hanger swirl. Time to get in here and cut these babies. I think I've decided to name her Olga. <laughs> Cause uh, I just, I don't know. It just struck me funny and I think that's her name. So let's get old Olga up and running. I tightened all the strings here and I loosen them just a, just a little. It doesn't have to be a lot, but just a teeny little loosen as uh, when I store it because I want the strings to last as long as I can get them to last. So I wanted to talk also about the inside. So this went through gel phase. Look at how light that cream color is on top. And then in here, it has a darker tinge. Well, as um, this continues to cure, I think it's gonna lighten up a little. And then the little spots in there are from the colloidal oats. So that's what you're seeing. Even though it's not an exfoliating oat, um, it does leave little flecks in there sometime. And when you have a very light colored soap, uh, you can see them more. So that is what's going on in there. Let's make sure I got this lined up. I have so been enjoying this cutter. It just tickles me every time. So let's get in here and see what we've got going on for the swirls. I love the top. These smell so juicy. Oh, I gotta get my fingers out of the way. There we go. Oh, we're going to get some fun patterns on these, but let's keep cutting and see what we've got. I tell you what though, this fragrance, I am a big citrus lover, and so uh, these smell divine. I mean, they are so good. There we go. So this fragrance from uh, Nature's Garden is, I think, a dupe of Love Spell, which I have actually never smelled Love Spell. Um, they call it Loving Spell, so they don't have any, you know, infringements on copyright or whatever. But um, it smells great. I've never smelled Love Spell perfume or any of their products like that. So I can't tell you if it's a spot-on dupe or not, but what I can tell you is it smells absolutely fantastic. It's very citrusy which I think is wonderful. And it's just bright. That's what made me think of mimosas because of the brightness. Um, it just smells really fresh, almost like orange juice, but more complicated than that. And I love how subtle these swirls are. Pretty tickled with these. I wish you could smell them. Somebody's going to come up with smell-o-vision one of these days. I know it. Some inventor is going to be brilliant and come up with smell-o-vision. All 
right, so every once in a while I like to talk you through what I'm doing here when I clean up my soap bars. So I cut these a little bit earlier. It's been a couple of hours and you can already see that that darkness in there is starting to lighten up as it touched the air. So I think these are gorgeous. Anyway, the way that I do this is it's the same day that I cut. Usually once in a while I will have a bar that's not quite firm enough and I'll wait a couple days, but this is just how I do it. A lot of people don't clean their soaps up until after they're cured. So anyway, this is how I do it. Same day as I cut, I have my KitchenAid vegetable peeler and I just like how sturdy it is and I get a nice smooth edge. I have my bucket of shavings that I, personally I rebatch this into bars of soap for my family. Um, but again, I've talked about you can do other things with it. You can make confetti soap with it. You can stuff it into little cotton pouches and bring it right in the shower with you. Uh, if you wet it down a little, you can even form it into soap balls and make little soap balls out of it. But this does not go to waste all this wonderful soap. So I take my peeler and I just do all of the corners around the sides and the bottom. Typically, I don't need to do the top and I usually have like decorations or something up there so I don't fuss with the top but you can see just that nice edge and it makes it really comfortable to hold in your hand. I don't like sharp edges on my soaps. So once it's all beveled, I pick a side and I have my soap stamp here. There's a link down below for the place that I got this. There's several places to get soap stamps, but this is specifically made for soap. This is a hard resin plastic mounted on wood. Um, but it's got a tall, it's got a little bit of height to the impression on it, so it makes a nice crisp impression. And I take my 91% rubbing alcohol and I spritz. And again, this is just the way I do it. Um, I find the spritzing, this helps it release and um, I get a cleaner impression. So that's how I approach it. I try to center it up here. And here's my mallet. There's a link down below for that. Give it a nice tap and I rock it out and there it is. A nice cl clean and crisp impression and then the alcohol will just evaporate off. So that is how I clean my soaps. So I'm going to get the rest of these done. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.